Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guest today is Grant Bledsoe. Let's talk about your money. We always love to talk about money, right, Grant? I mean, who doesn't want to talk about money? I do. <laughs> A lot of people do, yeah. Some people don't. <laughs> Some people don't. It's true. But we are talking to business owners, and there may be a few exceptions to the rule, but in general, we tend to be fairly conscientious of our money. And that's what you specialize in. Why don't we start by talking a little bit about your business so that our listeners have a frame of reference for who you are and what you do? Sure. So my, my business is called Three Oaks Wealth. Basically, we're a financial planning firm for small business owners. And really what we help people do is optimize their income, pay less money on taxes, toward taxes, and invest prudently for the long term. Uh, we arrived at this. The firm's been open for about 10 years, almost 10 years at this point. I've been in the industry for about 20. And prior to launching the firm, worked at uh, Charles Schwab and managed one of their trading desks for, for a time there. Uh, but I got to the point where I wanted to work with people more directly, and it seemed like everybody needs help with this stuff in some degree. There are a lot of people who are really interested in personal finance and their business finances and making sure they're both optimized and running kind of concurrently and aligned. But a lot of people just want to rely on a professional for help, too. And the industry was not offering what I thought uh, people were really asking for. So I launched the firm in 2014. And now we're a financial planning focused firm. We manage money for people as well. And uh, we work with a bunch of small business owners and get to help them in their, their business life cycle and make sure that their household wealth is aligned and helping them accomplish whatever it is that they want to do in their career and their life long term. So it's a it's a great it's a great job it's it's a heck of a lot of fun and um, I, I plan to continue for quite a while. You mentioned that you help people save money on taxes. I'd like to make sure we talk just a little bit about that. You mentioned building wealth. Now, when someone is at the earliest stages of a business, and we're not talking about an established, you know, maybe a serial entrepreneur that has multiple businesses and already has, you know, a pretty good net worth. We're talking about someone who maybe is grassrooting it. Maybe they are starting from, you know, I left my corporate job and now I'm doing my own thing. And I don't have a nice big nest egg. I'm, you know, just kind of, you know, really bootstrapping, right? Then you're just more in survival mode. But once you start to get some traction in your business, now you're starting to look at things a little bit differently because now you have that revenue coming in. And sometimes you have more revenue than you actually need to pay all of your employees and cover your own cost of living expenses. And so now the conversation in our mind is a little bit different because now it shifts from survival mode and that sort of startup phase into how can I start to be more strategic about my money so that I can set myself up for success? So I'm going to let you just kind of take that and <laughs> talk a bit about it from your perspective, because you're working with small business owners and you're seeing what their goals and their challenges are. That, that you, you, you frame that really, really well. And this is something that uh, everybody deals with in the life cycle of a business if you started from that grassroots startup that you described and gotten to the point where you have a little bit of extra cash coming in that you don't need beyond your your operating expenses and so this is what's going through people's heads usually when they come to that point hey things are going pretty well what do i do with this cash do i take it out of the business and pay myself more do i keep it in the business shouldn't i have a little bit of cash laying around for a rainy day what if I took that cash and invested more aggressively in marketing? Maybe I could grow faster, faster, right? Though, but then there's the taxation of it too. I don't want to pay unnecessary tax. And so oftentimes you have these kind of competing thoughts bouncing around your head and the cash just kind of winds up staying in the company bank account. And what I'm assuming here, Alicia, is that at this point you, you've 
uh, if you've gone from grassroots to having a little bit of extra cash set up, you have a formal um, entity organized. So maybe you, you've established a corporation or an LLC, and you have bank accounts in the name of that organization, as opposed to just running everything through your personal checking account. If you haven't done that and you get to this, this phase, please run out and go talk to a lawyer and open a bank account because it's going to make your life a lot easier going forward. Right. So every month, let's say that you you run your books or you have somebody run your books, you're reviewing financials, you have a little bit of extra cash in the account. There's this concept in, in financial planning of an emergency fund that uh, you may have heard of in the past. It's the idea of we just need a little bit of rainy day money sitting in the bank that's liquid and available for you to access if things don't go well. And usually when, when you hear about this or read about this, you're, you're talking about your household cash. You know, we, we have our monthly expenses and our mortgage and so forth, and maybe we pay ourselves into a checking account. The expenses come out of the checking account. Well, we should have a little bit of cash saved up in a savings account that's just there for us in case a bunch of bad things happen. Same concept applies to your business, okay? So if you have, let's, let's, let's use an example, you have $10,000 of revenue and $7,000 of monthly expenses, maybe including a little bit that you pay yourself, you have $3,000 left over at the end of the month. And the question is, what do you do with that $3,000? Well, everybody needs a little bit of working capital, which is also known as an emergency fund for your business. And so the general rule of thumb here is we want enough cash in your business accounts to fund 100% of your operating costs for between maybe two and six months. That's kind of the range that we should shoot for. And where you fall on that spectrum really depends on what in, a lot on what industry you're in. Uh, for example, my business is, is uh, professional services. We don't have a whole lot of like operating costs other than uh, professional salary. But if, if you're running like a manufacturing company that's a very capital intensive, you probably need closer to six months. Whereas a lot of people in professional services need less than that, maybe two or three months worth of cash. So step one is set your target for what are you comfortable with? Is it two months? Is it four? Is it six? Somewhere in between there. And then as extra cash accumulates, then you make the decision of, hey, am I? Sh how much cash do I have in the company bank account? Do I need to take that three grand a month and add it to the account to approach my goal? Or do I have excess? Okay. So if you have excess, that's when you make the decision, well, should I pay myself more? Should I take it out of the business? Should I reinvest and try to grow more aggressively? Those are your choices. And, and the taxability around that really depends on your organization uh, structure, which I can elaborate on in a minute. Um, how is that for a start? Did that answer your it. question off the bat? I love it. Now, I know that what you're, what you're sharing here is just basic fundamental stuff. I also know that some people are really good about doing the basic fundamental stuff and some people are not because they really haven't worked on sort of their their money mindset and their wealth consciousness. I'm glad you started with these basics because this is a foundation, what, what we're talking about right here, a foundation for that future wealth, which I know you're going to get into next. When you talked about uh, setting up your entity, I wouldn't be surprised if quite a few people listening who are considering themselves solopreneurs, maybe they have a couple of freelancers working for them, or maybe even um, you know, someone who considers themselves to be a small business owner, but they're a sole proprietor, maybe hopefully they're at least an LLC, right? But <laughs> There probably are quite a few people listening who don't have those fundamentals in place. So then let's take it a step further because I think that might actually inspire some of those listeners to be more proactive about those foundational steps, even if they're not there yet, even if they don't have the extra $3,000 using your example uh, left over at the end of the month. When you mentioned, um, 
you know, setting up your, what I guess you call it your tax status, right? How you, how you're incorporating your business, how you're registering your business. Let's just talk a little bit about that because I'm sure there are some people who have a basic understanding, but from that tax advantage perspective, from your perspective, um, what are some things you can share with our listeners about maybe the best way to set up their company for tax advantages? Sure. Yeah. So one really common misconception here is that if you run out and establish an LLC, that it's going to save you a bunch of money in taxes. That is absolutely not true. You're going to pay the same amount of taxes if you operate under an LLC as you do as a sole proprietorship. And and it might be kind of helpful to use uh, maybe the life the life cycle you described of, of grassroots to now we're viable having some cash flow kicking off uh, as maybe a yardstick for this conversation. Uh, l- let's say that you start with the grassroots and maybe your your business is selling ice cream cones on the corner or something like that. If you don't do anything other than go to the grocery store and put ice cream on your personal credit card and then go down to the corner and sell that ice cream at a profit, you're a sole proprietor. And from a tax perspective, what that means is you're recording your revenues and all your expenses on Schedule C of your personal tax return. That's important for legal reasons too. If somebody uh, eats one of your ice cream cones and they get sick and they sue you, in a sole proprietorship, there's no separation legally between your personal assets and the business activities. And so what that means is, is if somebody gets really sick and sues you for a million dollars and they have a case against you, that plaintiff can come after your house and all your other personal assets. And so oftentimes when we think about starting businesses, it makes a lot of sense to organize an LLC, which is its own legal entity for tax purposes. And if you're the only person or the only member in that LLC, that you're the only owner of the business, it's a single member LLC and all those revenues and expenses the ice, the ice cream you're selling and all the expenses at the grocery store, they're still recorded on your own personal 1040 for tax reasons. So there's no difference in taxation. You pay the same amount of self-employment income under, under either. The difference is that if you get sued in an LLC, uh, the plaintiff cannot come after your personal assets, which is really, really helpful. Now, the next evolution of this is an, uh, a corporation. So if you decide to organize a corporation, you have two choices, either an S corporation or a C corporation. And you do have an opportunity to file taxes as an LLC. uh, Excuse me. If you're an LLC, you can file your taxes as an S corporation, which I'll get to in just a moment. So if you incorporate, let's, uh, let's, let's hypothetically say that your income statement for the year shows $100,000 of revenue and uh, $70,000 of expenses, right? To keep our math easy. So if you're an LLC or a sole proprietor, you record $100,000 of revenue and $70,000 of expenses on your own tax return, you have $30,000 left over. That $30,000 is subject to the self-employment tax. The self-employment tax is 15.3%. That number is important, and I'll, I'll try to break this down as in simple terms, or at least as, as much as possible. The self-employment tax is 15.3% because that's your contribution to Social Security and Medicare. When you're a W-2 employee somewhere, you pay Social Security and Medicare tax. The total is 6.2% for Social Security, 1.45% for Medicare, for a total of 7.65%. Okay. When you're self-employed, you're the employee and the employer, and therefore you have the luxury, quote unquote, of paying (laughs) both sides of the self-employment tax, 7.65 for the employee, 7.65 for the employer for a total of 15.3%. So the way this works is you have $100,000 of revenue, $70,000 of expenses, $30,000 left over. That $30,000 is subject to the self-employment tax of 15.3%. Let's say you incorporate as an S-corporation. An S-corporation means that it's a different it's a different type of legal entity. It's uh, a little more 
time intensive on a year to year basis to maintain, especially if you have other owners, you have to have shareholder meetings and take minutes and all this stuff to maintain the legal entity. But you also have to pay yourself a W-2 salary that's commensurate with your efforts in the business. And so what that means for our ice cream example is that if you have $30,000 left over at the end of the year, if you're an S corporation, you have 100 grand of revenue, 70 of expenses, you have to pay yourself a W-2 salary. And maybe that's 50% of whatever's left over, the 30 grand. So what that looks on your in looks like on your income statement is now your expenses go up from 70,000 to 85,000 and you have $15,000 left over. That 15,000 that you're paying yourself is considered a business expense. The business pays uh payroll tax on it, which is the, the business's side of the 7.65%. And then you as the individual the employee of the corporation receives 15000 in income and pays 7.65% uh, for Social Security and Medicare. You have 100000 of revenue, 85000 of expenses, and now you have $15,000 left over. LLCs, S corporations are both pass-through entities. And so what that means is any profits left over, the tax responsibility of that falls back to the ownership or, or you, right? So the $15,000 remaining after you've paid your own salary is sent back to you as the owner of the S corporation and you have the luxury of paying income tax on it. The tax benefit, and this is a little cir circuitous, sorry, it's taken me a while to get there. The tax benefit is that the $15,000 left over is not subject to that payroll tax. So you're on the, on the fifteen thousand left over. You're circumventing that fifteen point three percent level of taxation. The downside of that is you're not paying into the social security system with that money. So it's not a, uh, uh, helping your retirement benefit way down the road. But it is a really handy way to pay a little bit less in tax on a year to year basis. When you have an S corporation, the or the business files its own tax return. Uh, there's a little bit more involved from a tax perspective. And so your your annual costs for going this route go up a little bit. And for that reason, it doesn't really make sense to explore until you get to, you know, around $100,000 in, in revenue. So that, that may have been a little bit more detailed than you asked lot. for. But... That was a lot of information, <laughs> but it was amazing information. <laughs> um, now for... Those listening who are, they're following along as best they can. They get it conceptually. They understand there's definitely advantage here in this. Um, but now their next question is, okay, well, what do I do with that extra $15,000? So- yep. Where does it go? What do I have to do something special with it? Can I somehow use that to my benefit? Yep. Yep. So that's that's a great question. That's the the, the perfect next question to ask. So if you have <clears throat> if you have the LLC, you have your expenses, you have thirty thousand dollars left over in the company bank account. Maybe you take fifteen thousand of it out to pay yourself. Remember that you're already paying tax on the thirty thousand. You're not incurring any additional tax by taking the money out of the business account, and putting it in your own account. The taxable events already occur. There's no difference whatsoever. In the S corporation, if you're paying yourself fifteen thousand, then you have fifteen thousand left over. Again, you're the individual paying tax on that fifteen grand. It doesn't matter whether it stays in that account or whether it comes out. Okay. So you have fifteen thousand left in the bank. That's when you make your decision of okay, what do we do with it? Do we have enough of an emergency fund for the business? Do we need to take some of that 15,000 or all of that and just leave it in the bank to get toward our two to six months of operating expense target? Or do we have more than we need? We don't want half a million dollars just sitting in the bank. It's it's You're losing purchasing on power on that by the hour. So at that point, we need to make the decision of, do you wanna reinvest it back into the business? Or do you want to take it out of the business? Maybe put it in your personal accounts. This is where other tax saving opportunities come into play. And the one that 
financial planners like myself love to use because they're really powerful are tax-advantaged retirement plans through the business like a SEP IRA or a 401k or any number of qualified plan options that business owners have available to them. Because that's where it may, maybe you take that 15000 and deposit it into a SEP IRA in the name of the business. Well, guess what? Now you're not paying tax on that $15,000 that's left over because you agreed to lock it up for your own retirement way down the road. And there are a lot of um, other implications of establishing uh, retirement plans in your business. But if it's just you, you don't have any employees that that could potentially be a pretty good option. So now we're talking about taking your money. You're saving saving some money on your taxes right mm -hmm. now here in this present day. And you are putting that into your future retirement account. And it is supposed to be accumulating wealth for you. So then let's just briefly touch on the, the last entity. I don't want to go too deep into it, but you mentioned also you can just do a do a c-corp so let's just talk about that real briefly in case someone is saying well i thought he mentioned there was one more what's the deal with that <laughs> there's one more it's usually not not exclusively but usually uh, a better fit for larger businesses that have um at least a couple dozen employees it's a corporation, um, and the difference between the S corporation and the C corporation is the C corporation is not a pass-through entity. And so, with the S corporation, you have a hundred thousand of revenue, you have thirty thousand, uh, seventy thousand of expenses, plus your own salary of fifteen, and you have fifteen thousand dollars left over. Being a, a pass-through entity, that fifteen thousand you as the individual are expected to pay tax on that fifteen thousand on your personal tax return. So the S the business pay, uh, files its own tax return, but when you file the return, the business doesn't like shell out money to pay the tax bill. You as the owner pay the tax bill. With the C corporation, it is not a pass through entity. So a hundred in uh, revenue, eighty five thousand dollars in expenses, including your own salary, fifteen thousand left over. The corporation pays tax on that 15000 at the prevailing corporate tax rates, which are different than the tax rates that you and I pay as individuals. That's the main difference. Legally, uh, the structure is, is um, I don't want to say identical. I'm not, I'm not an attorney and, and <laughs> don't know, frankly, but they're very close. They're both corporations. And uh, the, the, the main difference is whether the organization pays tax or not. When you have an S corporation, you're also limited to having 100 owners of the business. And so all the publicly traded companies that you or I could buy stocks in, they're every, in every single circumstance, they're C corporations so that they can issue publicly traded shares. So now everyone has gotten a nice overview of what their options are in terms of <clears throat> you know, how to structure their business. Um, Let's talk a little bit about some of the mindset challenges that people are bumping into when it comes to, to really starting to prepare for their future and to put money into those accounts that can start to actually accumulate and grow wealth. Everybody talks about wanting to be rich, <laughs> but a lot of people are intimidated by just the, the most basic fundamental small steps that need to be taken to begin that process. And I'd like to talk about where people are really getting tripped up and not even starting, or maybe they have set up something like a, a 401k and they're just, they're not doing anything with it because it's intimidating. Yeah. 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 Uh... In my office, we call that momentum. Um, you probably have a more elaborate clinical term than I do for it. But uh, yeah, it's it's overwhelming to start. And like we were talking about earlier, you, you have all these options of what to do with extra cash if you have extra cash in your business. Uh, and people are, I think, reluctant or fearful of doing the wrong thing. 
uh, many times. And so it's like anything, we just chop this up into baby steps. The first baby step is just set a target for how much cash you want in your business. Okay. Again, the range is two to six months worth of operating expenses. If you're growing and hiring a bunch of people, you probably want to include their compensation. Or if you're buying a big piece of equipment, you want to incorporate all your needs for cash over this two to six month time span to land on whatever your cash uh, target is for the business. That's step number one is just set a goal. Take a look at the income statement, divide the monthly or multiply the monthly uh, operating expense by between two and six. Then compare that goal to what uh, ca what the total cash in the business is. And you don't even need to log if, if you're doing your books yourself or if, if you're, you're having somebody else do them for you, like your accountant, you can just use your company balance sheet if they're compiling that for you every month. So compare step one, set a target. Step two is compare how much cash you have to how much cash you need. That's all you need to do to start. Step three is, okay, now if we do decide that we want to take cash out of the business, if you're uncomfortable with the potential tax ramifications of that, and so we just talked about C-corporations a minute ago. Since the C-corporation is not a pass-through entity, if you have one and you have extra money you want to take out of the business, that is a taxable event. And there are ways to do that thoughtfully and strategically that you might want to correspond with your tax professional on. If you have a C corporation, chances are you have a tax professional you're working with. If you have one and you are doing it yourself or don't have a tax professional and you're unsure about this stuff, I, I would really urge you to hire a professional at that point because it does get a little bit more complex. So if you're if you're uncomfortable with uh, the the uh, the next step of do we take cash out if we do what are the tax ramifications just talk to somebody and then sl split it up into baby steps that that's really all it is. So before we wrap up because I know this is really just this is scratching the surface I'm sure you could probably put together you know a huge training on all of this stuff, right? Breaking it down for people, helping them to understand what to do, the right ways to do it, who to consult, all of that good stuff. But since we don't have time for that, I want to make sure that we are giving people, I mean, you gave some really practical tips, things that people can implement like today, right? So that's really great. But I want to leave people with perhaps something that you think is really valuable for the majority of business owners to consider who are looking at their future. You know, yeah. these individuals are, they're not getting a 401k from an employer, right? They're not, it's not being done for them. They have to do it for themselves. They have to create their own wealth. So for those individuals, what would you like to leave us with? Yeah, that you, you, you hit on the, the exact topic I was going to bring up. And that's, you know, the other side of what you described is what we call your baby's ugly syndrome. And a lot of people have these grandiose visions of what their business will become. And, you know, I don't need to put money away for my future because my business business is the retirement plan. I, I will grow it and then at some point sell it. And whatever I get for the business after taxes will be enough to sustain me for the rest of my life. And the your baby's ugly syndrome is is for all of us, you know, your your business is your baby. And other people don't look at it quite as affectionately as you do. <laughs> and that's it, it, a lot of just outside things can happen that would really impact the amount you ultimately get for the business. And there's also a huge question of whether the business is going to be sellable in the first place. I don't know the stat off the top of my head, but I think it's something like 80% of businesses don't ever sell. They just kind of fold and close. So it's really, really important that you, you put some money away as you're operating and building your business for yourself, for the future, that's unrelated to your business assets. And in the investment world, we think of this as a type of diversification. But the IRS 
wants us all to save for retirement. So they give us these great tax advantaged options to use like the 401k, like the SEP IRA that we talked about earlier. So the, the, the thing I, I think that we should leave people with is, you know, entrepreneurship is a wonderful thing and it allows you to make a huge imprint on the world and uh, carve out your own career in the way that you want. But we just need to be realistic with the long-term prospects of it and organize it in a way to where it kicks off more cash than you need and just be thoughtful about putting that cash away for the future in a way that'll grow with you. There are so many applications of that. As you pointed out, we, we, we too many to cover on today's show. But if if you're into it and want to do it yourself, there are plenty of resources out there to do that. You can check out you know my show and stuff if you want. Uh, and if you want to delegate it to a professional, there are a lot of good professionals that do that. Not all financial planners are created equal. I would definitely suggest you find someone that specializes in this stuff and uh, probably collaborates with a tax person to just make sure you are you have the information you need and, and are making good decisions with your assets. Let's make sure we direct people to your show. And can you also share with our listeners any other ways that they can connect with you? Yeah, the easiest way to to connect is just to check out our, our website. I, I have a podcast. Alicia, you were an awesome guest on on it here a few months back uh, talking about mindset. It's called Grow Money Business. We talk about this exact kind of stuff. We talk about investments and financial planning for business owners, and we dive into the details uh, of this on a weekly basis. So check out Grow Money Business. Uh, it's pretty much everywhere you can download podcasts. And then our website is threeoakswealth.com. So that's an easy one. You can check out what we do and we have um, blogs and a newsletter and we publish all our podcast episodes there. So you can sign up for our sub, uh, uh, weekly subscription just to stay in touch with what we're doing. I loved this conversation because I think that this is a foundational part of business that is often neglected. People will get an LLC and they'll have a bank account out of sort of seeming necessity, <laughs> if you want to call it that, right? Um, but they're oftentimes just not taking their own future success seriously. They're not taking advantage of all of this now opportunity to create a really good future for yourself. And while I'm fully an advocate for living in the present moment and thinking big about what you can create for yourself, I also know that there are some very practical things that we need to do in our lives that will make our lives so much better. And that's why I think this is such a great conversation to have. Well, it was, I, I really enjoyed it, Alicia. And, and, you know, what we see when uh, working on the stuff with people is that when you have lingering uncertainty or doubt about the financial aspects of the business, you get that stuff ironed out and solidified as a foundation. It narrows the stuff that your, your scope of responsibility as a business owner and are therefore that much better at the task that you're focusing on. The, the, the stuff just gets better once you have this, these issues ironed out in a way that's propelling you toward your future objectives. Great conversation. And thank you so much, Grant, for being with us today. My pleasure, Alicia. I, I really enjoyed it. And thank you to all of our listeners. You know we're doing this for you. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.